Welcome to Rap Geek. Thanks for stopping by to get the latest and the greatest news and information. If this is your first time, you're invited to hit that subscribe and notification bell so you can get all the latest info as soon as it drops. Wake up, wake up! Young Thug's RICO trial continues, and after several months of legal proceedings, it looks like the YSL founder is worn out. In a new post making its rounds online, he's even seen dozing off in the courtroom as his lawyer Brian Steele speaks to the judge. While fans find it amusing, they certainly can't blame Young Thug for getting in some much needed rest. After all, his first trial began in November of last year and his retrial shows no signs of coming to a close anytime soon. Round one. Yeah, they're in the first quarter again. Young Thug has also been behind bars since May of 2022, which surely hasn't helped. 106 days on trial. I'd be tired too, one Instagram user writes in the Shade Room's comment. He said, wrap it up, wrap it up, someone else jokes. Young Thug wishes it was that easy. Man, prayers up to Young Thug. Despite repeated requests for a speedy trial, it's been anything but that so far. In fact, it becomes the longest in Georgia history, which likely explains Young Thug's exhaustion. Just last month, a new judge was assigned to the case, following two other recusals. While the rapper and his lawyer were admittedly relieved, someone new overseeing the trial, it seems to have caused even more delays. To make matters more frustrating, his latest bond request was denied last month, meaning that he's no closer to freedom. Fans continue to call for Young Thug's release and raise concerns about how he's been treated throughout the trial. Recently, Donald Trump even appeared on Aiden Ross's stream, where he accused District Attorney Fanny, give up the Fanny, of treating him unfairly. I would tell Willis, what you talking about Willis? She got to treat these patriots that are being treated all terrible. She's got to get off their backs and stop going after them, he said. Charlemagne the God slams Kamala Harris for reaching out to Kai Sinai. Charlemagne is upset. Let's see what old uh, Kazoo has to say. Charlemagne the God wants something more organic. Charlemagne the God wasn't a fan of Kamala Harris's team reaching out to Kai Sinat about collaborating on a live stream. The Breakfast Club hosts discussed the story on Wednesday morning, days after Donald Trump spoke with Aiden Ross. Hit me and tell me who sent you the text, man, because whoever owned Vice President Kamala Harris's team hit Kai Sinat to do a live stream, they need to be fired, Charlemagne began. Stop letting social media run her campaign. You saw Donald Trump go on Aiden Ross and you saw the attention that it garnered. Now you saw the headlines that it got. You saw social media starting to say Vice President needs to go on Kai Sinat and you ran to make it happen. Not even stopping to think, is this organic or fake? Does Kai Sinat even care about politics? Man, y'all trying to be culture vultures. Get out of here with that mess, Charlemagne said, and he's 100% right. It ain't organic, it's fake. Get out of here, you like a rubber steak. From there, Charlemagne theorized Sonat is certainly not a fan of Trump, but also clearly isn't interested in politics. You know why the Trump and Aiden Ross stream worked? Because Aiden Ross had real interest in Donald Trump, he explained. And I do believe politicians should absolutely meet people where they are, but it still has to make sense. Let it be something organic, not fake. There are influencers Kai's age, but I don't know. I'm all for meeting people where they are, but it also makes sense from there. He recommended Harris speak with the 85 South show, but speak with somebody that's in your category and stop trying to fake it to make it. You ain't fooling the fans, even after that little concert you had with the twerkers on stage at your rally. Come on now. But in other election news, Harris announced on Tuesday that Minnesota Governor Tim Walls will be her running mate. But be on the lookout for further updates from Charlemagne the God, as well as, you know, the presidential election. DJ Academic says Drake's latest drop proves he's the greatest of all time. DJ Academics went off on fans of Kendrick Lamar during a live stream on Tuesday night after going through the 100 gigabytes of material Drake put out. 
Among the release were three new singles. It's Up, featuring Young Thug and 21 Savage, Blue Green Red, and Housekeeping Nose, featuring Lotto. Drizzy back in that bag. That's why y'all can't kill the goat, he began. If y'all hate on him rapping, he's gonna go R&B. If y'all hate on him doing that, he's gonna do some dancehall-ish. If y'all hate on him doing that, he's over there doing some Afro beats. Y'all can't stop the goat. Sorry. I'm sorry. So sorry. I know y'all mad. Y'all hating. He's about to deliver a classic with Party Next Door. He's about to have all you be Wet until MF and Christmas. Then he's about to drop some rap tracks, dissing everybody else again. Yo, this is how it's gonna be. Y'all can't get over it. Y'all can't get rid of the goat. I apologize if your favorite artist ain't that versatile. From there he added, I'm sorry, y'all favorite rapper only give y'all the songs to Crip Walk to. Wop, wop, wop. Y'all on Google like, how do I do that dance? Your favorite rapper can do one thing. My favorite rapper can do 10 things. Multitask in every genre. I'm sorry. So sorry. Fans in the replies were anything but surprised by the stance. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. PNB Rock's family has finally gotten justice. Today, nearly three years after the fatal shooting of PNB Rock, his family has finally gotten justice. Freddie Trone and Tremont Drone's trial came to an end, according to Rolling Stone's Nancy Dillon, and they were both hit with guilty verdicts. Trone was found guilty of murder, two counts of robbery, and one count of conspiracy, and Jones was found guilty of robbery and conspiracy. Trone is the father of the 17-year-old believed to have pulled the trigger back in 2022, who was deemed mentally unfit to stand trial just last month. Prosecutors accused Trone of instructing his son to enter the South Los Angeles Roscoe Chicken and Waffles and rob the rapper after Jones tipped him off. Trone, on the other hand, insisted that he only helped his son after the shooting had already been carried out. I understand you're trying to put this together and put your story together, he told prosecutors earlier this week. I have never had anything to do with it. I wasn't even there. I didn't tell nobody to do nothing. I didn't hand him no gun. Clearly, the jury wasn't buying his story. <laughs> Dates for Trone and Jones sentencing have not yet been announced. But the news comes shortly after PNB Rock's mother, Dina Allen, called Trone out in an interview outside of the courtroom. His lies are ridiculous. This is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. The surveillance should speak for itself, she told Rolling Stone. They're trying to say he had nothing to do with it. It's unacceptable. My son was a beautiful person. But what do you think about PNB Rock's accused killer being found guilty in court today? God is real and God ain't playing. And we are not surprised. But we're on to the next story. Cardi B in a more somber note. Man, Cardi B reveals she nearly had a miscarriage after a freak accident. Let's dive in. Apparently, a lot of morphine was needed to treat the pain. She was seriously hurt. Cardi B is expecting a third child, with now two-time ex-husband Offset. According to Hip Hop DX, the Bronx, New Yorker could have been dealing with another harrowing obstacle this year. Cardi B recently hosted a ex spaces after the exciting news divulging on the fact that she nearly suffered a miscarriage thanks to a freak accident. She never goes into detail about what occurred, but the pain she was harboring was so intense that she required heavy dosages of morphine. Furthermore, the hitmaker added that she was even paralyzed temporarily. It had become so big to the point I was literally paralyzed. However, she mentions that she is in a much better state. In a tired voice, Cardi B says, and that little thing almost cost me my little one to come, but it didn't. Yesterday I was feeling good. I came home, but I came home high as a kite. Later on, she jokes about wanting to go back for more drugs. Today I woke up sober. Honey, I'm dying. 
again. And if I don't feel better in four hours, I'm going to the hospital and I don't give a F. I'm gonna exaggerate this ish so I can get some more morphine. Morphine me down, cause I'm no, 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 no you don't. I don't give a dang she said while laughing. But yeah, slow down on that. You don't need that, you all right. And quit making jokes cause people gonna think you talking for real. Hey man, this next story is outrageous. Kodak Black's questionable advice for youth football team sparks an uproar. Man, Kodak, come on, man. We thought you was doing better. Social media users think Kodak Black should have been more careful about his words. Yeah, he needs somebody to have him sometime write his little speech and let them do the talking. But it goes without saying, Kodak Black has seen a lot in his life. But for this reason, it seems like he would be an excellent candidate to pass on some lessons he's learned about battling his addiction. Lately, he's allegedly been taking steps towards sobriety, and fans are glad to see him on a better path. But recently, however, he was recruited to give a motivational speech to a youth football team in Florida. A few of his comments has raised a whole lot of eyebrows, and social media users don't think he delivered his message in a kid-friendly way. Say no to drugs, say no to drugs, say no to drugs. He told the group of children, they're too good. Y'all gonna like them and go crazy, he said. Many are pointing out that he appeared to address the group while holding both alcohol and a blunt. Don't do drugs, let me do them. Aye, aye, y'all don't do them and more for me. Y'all gonna like them too much, just like I like them too much. And not, hey, y'all gonna be over here doing the James Brown like me in the bushes. Hey, the baby done. Others argue that telling young and impressionable individuals that drugs are too good on any level is beyond irresponsible. Bro smoking and drinking? Telling them not to do drugs when comment or ass? Man, why is he even speaking to the kids with a beer in his hand? Someone else wonders, while most viewers think he shouldn't address children again in the future ever, others are coming to his defense. Can't say he wrong for being straightforward, one fan says. Man, is you crazy? Man, you gotta be real with him. These kids ain't foolish these days, another claims. But what do you think about Kodak Black's recent speech to a Florida youth football team while holding a, a splash, a shot of something, a ripple, and holding a blunt? Man, and he talking about the drugs is too good, don't do this, let me do them. Drizzy Drake just might be back for round two. Let's get ready to rumble! In this corner, we got K-Dot. And in that corner, we've got Drizzy Drake. But first up, we've got 21 Savage possibly dissing, yeah, your boy, Kendrick Lamar, seemingly on Drake's It's Up. Let's dive into the conversation. Fans think 21 Savage has weighed in on the beef. Oh yeah, this is why fans think 21 Savage dissed Kendrick Lamar with his appearance on Drake's new song, It's Up. The Toronto rapper shared the track online Tuesday, along with two other singles and plenty of other content. All in all, he dropped 100 gigabytes of material for fans to peruse through. Make a couple songs think he hot now. Hit his A up, he think he pop now. 21 raps on the verse, he's featured on the song alongside Young Thug. Pew, pew, pew. Fans had plenty of mixed feelings and responses to 21's decision to join the feud on social media, picking sides through sneak dissing instead of publicly defending his boys in efforts are scared to say Candyman's name. Who is Candyman? The Boogeyman, Kendrick Lamar. Others argue 21 didn't intend to come at Lamar. I doubt it's probably an old song, considering there's a thug feature. One fan noted, hmm, well, maybe we don't know, but 21's possible diss comes after Drake's viral feud with Kendrick Lamar, which saw him release several diss tracks aimed at the Compton rapper, including the Heart Part 6, Family Matters, and Push Ups. But many fans felt Lamar took home the victory. Pew, pew, pew. After dropping the hit song, Not Like Us, and hosting the pop-out, Ken and Friends in Los Angeles. But what do you all think? Let's continue. 
fans can check out Drake's new song, It's Up, featuring 21 Savage and Young Thug on their website. Yeah, but in addition to the track he dropped, Blue, Green, Red, and Housekeeping Nose, featuring Lotto, be on the lookout for further updates on Kendrick Lamar and Drake and 21's possible, you know, one-two punch. Is he jumping into the battle? Who knows? YSL Woody. Oh boy, the member was unbothered. YSL Woody mocks the judge when asked if he will testify against Young Thug. Man, what this dude up to now? YSL Woody in the hood. Chicka, 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 the hood toy story. YSL Woody has become an unexpectedly huge part of the Young Thug case. The YSL affiliate has been treated like a star witness by the prosecution. Fanny, Fanny, Fanny! The problem is, Woody's real name, which is Kenneth Copeland, is not keen on cooperating. He's gone back and forth on whether he'll testify against his boss. His latest court showing, however, may be his most memorable. YSL Woody took the stand, and instead of being cooperative, man, he decided to mock the judge. Needless to say, the prosecution wasn't pleased at all. Man, YSL Woody was informed that he would be held in content if he does not testify against Young Thug now. This information was relayed to him by Judge Whitaker, who was relatively new to the case. YSL Woody went on to ask questions of his own instead of answering Whitaker's. When pressed to make a definitive decision, Woody decided to be flippant. He was asked again whether he planned to testify and responded with, depends on how I wake up. YSL Woody's response caused headaches for seemingly everybody in the court. And Judge Whitaker told the prosecution that Woody would have to clarify whether he plans to testify before actually giving testimony. Oh, Woody's gotta step up to the plate. Woody's behind the scenes antics have complicated matters further. The YSL affiliate has reportedly fired two different attorneys. Judge Whitaker made note of this bizarre pattern and maintained that Woody needed to clarify who is representing him at the moment. The YSL star witness has also spurred Judge Whitaker to look into his past. He has claimed via social media that he felt coerced into giving up information about YSL. The judge has subsequently decided to take the witness seriously. I'm not sure about Mr. Copeland's credibility on anything she asserted. Woody trying to get up out of there. But Judge Whitaker ultimately ruled that YSL Woody will have to retestify before the court. A transcript released to the public in July supported Woody's claims that he was not fully aware of what he was doing during his in-trial court appearance. You waited until Friday and did this? He told his attorney at the time, I done told you every day before I first came that I was pleading the fifth. Y'all done me wrong. Y'all just hold me in jail. Don't let me get no pen number, no nothing. Woody is expected to take the stand again on Monday, August the 12th. YSL Woody back on the hot seat. Oh boy, what do you think? Hey, he's got to get a little more serious. I don't think Judge Whitaker is going to play like uh, Judge Glanville. But hey, he wrote more of the song than we thought. Drake really blitzed fans on August the 6th. The rapper decided to drop over 100 gigabytes of new and unreleased material. There were some songs thrown in for good measure, but the truly revelatory material came in the form of video footage. One of the most notable was the footage for Yikes! Drake received a credit on the 2018 Kanye West song. But it seems the rapper Drizzy Drake was single-handedly responsible for coming up with the hook. And it's easy to see why the six guy leaked this session. The footage sees him harmonizing over the Kanye West beat that anchored the final song. What was evident from the session though, is that Drake was figuring out the hook for Yikes in real time. The pieces of what will become the finished version can be heard during the first few seconds. Ish could get menacing, frightening. Find help, the Toronto star sings. Sometimes I scare myself. So he came up with the hook during and in real time. To be clear, Drake's work on Yikes is not a ghostwriting situation. He's credited as one of the main songwriters on the song, alongside Consequence and 070 Shake. It's more that Drake's contribution to the song appears to be the most substantial of anybody involved in its making. 
The footage aligns with the picture that Drake painted when it comes to Kanye West's 2018 recording sessions. The rapper said that West wanted to become his Quincy Jones and help boost his career during an appearance on HBO's The Shop. Kanye West sold me the whole speech, Drake recalled. Like, I'm in a great place. I'm making money. I'm a father. I want to be Quincy Jones and help you. But in order to do that, you got to be transparent with me. And you got to play me your music and tell me when you're dropping. The Toronto rapper said that he fell for Kanye West's pitch and subsequently burned by him. West famously surrounded the release date for Drake Scorpion with his own good music albums. I was in the studio and I guess we felt a genuine vibe from it, the rapper admitted. Now the fans have the footage of this genuine vibe. In a continuance of Drizzy Drake news, Drake follows IG account hitting at round two of the Kendrick Lamar battle. Oh boy, again, let's get ready to rumble! at four foot eight and drizzy drake at four foot eleven something's brewing in the six drake is doing something the rapper followed a mysterious instagram account and hours later 100 gigabytes of new material was released new music unreleased footage alternate artwork the works man it's a dream come true for drake fans dating back to 2020 the things that has us on the edge of our seats though is what the rapper has done since dropping 100 gigabytes on our head tops. Instead of laying low again, he has decided to follow another mystery account. Instead of teasing new material though, the account seems to hit at round two of a notable fight. Fight, 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 just like Donald said. The account is titled, I-N-D-I-G-O child, however you want to say it, and doesn't have a ton of followers. It's the bio that really proves to be the only thing out of the ordinary. The information provided by the account seems to reference the Six Guys 100 gigabyte dump and hinting at more to come. The first account made some people very anxious. The bio reads, here we go again, round two, fight. Fans were definitely confused by the rollout for the 100 GB's release. The round two could technically refer to a second drop of material, but it's the fight part that speaks volumes. Drake knows what following an account with such an inflammatory bio will hint at, and he's playing along as he should. Let's get it started. Yeah, you remember the song by MC Hammer? Let's get it started. Oh, yeah. Yeah, get your hammer pants ready. <laughs> Fans have been waiting for Drake to resume the Kendrick Lamar battle since the response to the Hard Part 6 disc. It was generally agreed upon that the six guy had fun with the ball with that one. Nah, I don't think so. That's just some opinions. Why y'all writing that in there? But it was also noted that there could be more to come. DJ Academics has all but confirmed it during a stream in July. It's really never over, the DJ noted. Man, I can't wait to hear what's gonna drop as Axe started to delve more into detail. But he decided to cut it off. Matter of fact, he said before stopping, man, I won't even tell y'all what I heard. You're gonna have to wait. Get your Q-tips ready, clean the mirrors out, and be waiting for the drop. Furthermore, industry veterans like Ice Cube asserted that the battle could resume at any time. In June, Cube went on the big pod with Shaq and told Kendrick Lamar to stay ready. He felt that Lamar had won the battle, but nah, not many of us think that. But up to that point, Ice Cube had noted that the story is far from finished. It don't mean that Drake can't get up off the canvas, the rapper noted. If I was Kendrick Lamar, Ice Cube say, man, I stay cocked and loaded. We're very, very curious to see what's next with the six guy. I 
think some flames have already dropped. You see what he did for Kanye West? You're talking about he don't ink a hot pen. Man, get up out of here. As always, do me a favor, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Stay tuned to Rap Geek for all the latest updates on this unfolding saga and more. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.